with that, let's get started and welcome Sam. And Will. Yeah. Sam and Will, sorry. It's all good, thanks. All right, uh, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Will, this is Sam. Um, today we're gonna be talking about uh, cash in the aisles, how gift cards are easily exploited. Um, this talk's been accumulating for about two years. We actually started re uh, researching this in about 2015, reached out to a lot of um, vendors that use these gift cards. Some of them have fixed them, some of them haven't. Um, it's pretty trivial how to do this. So if you guys wanna follow along, if you have Burp Intruder or Burp Suite, we're gonna walk you through how you do it step by step. Uh, show you some examples of companies that don't know what they're doing, some that have fixed it, um, and how you can basically steal other people's values off their gift cards, write them to your own gift cards, and uh, go use their money for food. So without to start, myself, uh, William Caput, uh, started in the Marine Corps with uh, cryptography, worked at EY, PwC, Bill.com, NTT Security. Uh, Sam? Yeah, these are some of the organizations I'm involved with at the moment. Uh, DC530, the DEF CON group, NORCON, you can see my shirt here. Uh, it's a conference in Northern California. We just had the second year. And uh, IDF Fab Labs, which is in Chico. It's a makerspace, hackerspace type of thing. Cool. All right, so what you typically think, un unactivated gift cards have no value. You go into a store, you have there all those cards sitting out on front. You go to like a restaurant, fast food joint. There's all these gift cards sitting out front on the, on the uh, just, you just take them, right? They don't have any value on them, but with what we're gonna show you here, you can actually you know, create value for them or find the patterns on the cards and use those patterns to find cards that were sold prior or loaded. Um, they're obviously, they're out in the open so you can take them. They, they don't have any you know, security measures on them. At least some of them don't now. Some of them have captchas or whatnot. Um, you can enumerate them and uh, yeah, so quite a bit of fraud that's possible. Um, so. Kind of what I stated here. Uh, we'll find the value of the vulnerable cards. We'll determine the invalid and invalid card numbers, enumerate the valid card numbers, and then write the data to the card to use in the physical store. All right. So you see these out, you know, pretty much any store, uh, restaurant, fast food place. You go in, you pick up a stack of them, you flip them over. It's kind of hard to see, but we'll have a clearer slide next. There's, uh, you know, there's 12 digit numbers on the back. Those numbers follow a pattern. And if everybody looks at this, can everybody determine the pattern that is on these cards? It's pretty much universal. So you see the last four octets are pseudo-random, and then the 11th digit, I'm sorry, wait. Yeah, 12th digit goes up by one, and increments by one. So those are the ones that are sitting you know, at the restaurant, at the, the, you know, the place you're trying to you know, take advantage of. What we can do is determine that the cards that are not there have been sold to somebody. So somebody's come in, picked one up, and says, I'd like to put 50 bucks on this card. Somebody loads it, takes it home for their kid or whatever, for a gift. That card's been sold. So we just iterate in reverse. So the cards that were sitting there, we know are 6566. Six, six. Well, 64, 63, 62 are gone, right? Most likely sold. Somebody bought them. So how do we determine valid and invalid uh, responses for these cards? This is where Burp Intruder comes into play. Um, and this is another example. Um, so checking a balance on a card, you put a card number in, you can look at the, uh, the message that it gives back. Um, you can tell the difference between a valid and invalid message. So that's kind of what we're gonna be talking about here. So here's a valid card. You guys are familiar with post requests. Uh, use a proxy tool, use Burp is what we use here for um, this particular example. Uh, the post request, it has the gift card number in it. You, you know, send that through for a valid card. The response comes back. You know, this card doesn't have any money on it. So you know it's a valid card. An invalid card, you just make up a random number for it. And it comes back with, you know, another, a different error with gift card balance. So there's a, there's a, a difference in the response. So if you have a difference in a response, you can use Burp to enumerate valid cards based upon that response. So here's, if you've used Burp before, I'll walk you through it quickly. Um, you intercept your post request, you send it to Burp Intruder, you put the markers on the last four uh, digits of that card, because we know the last four digits are the ones changing, right? We don't know those four digits. We know the one before it goes up by one, so we're going backwards by one. So you put your marker there, you set your payload set to a number, 
you're going to do sequential from 0, 0, 0, 0001 to 9999, um, step of one, four digits. So this is the random four digits, not the ones that are incrementing. So we know, that we know the first 12, right? So the first 12, we basically say this is the card number. We're going to minus one from the card number. We need to find the last four digits of the card. So we can now use Burp Intruder to hammer away at those four digits. So it's going to make about 10,000 requests looking and looking for a, a response. We know the, the invalid response, error with gift card balance. So we can put that in as a grep match and then sort based upon what it doesn't find. So you're going to have all but one response saying error. The one that doesn't say error is the one that has the money on it. So you run it through. Um, the attack will run. Um, the free version of Burp does this. So if you guys download it, you can even try this at home on, on your own card. Um, <laughs> So you open the valid request, it'll say, okay, this is the gift card number, and we've, we've X'd out the numbers there because uh, I still have money on that card, so. <laughs> and the response says, you know, there's $5 on this card. And we basically sorted those burp uh, intruder responses um, for the inverse of error. So there's five bucks on that card, so. All right, so I'll show you how to make your card. Um, First, I'm going to talk about some Magstripe basics. For those of you who haven't looked at this kind of thing with credit cards, it's basically the same technology. Um, you can have up to three tracks of data. You don't need all three tracks. You can just write one or two if you want. Um, the format that gift cards usually use is ISO format. And when you're using the, the tools I'll show you in a bit, you can just read in the raw format if you have something that's not ISO, it's something else. Um, the tool that came with the reader writer we have uh, will also do AMVA um, and California DMV, although I tried it with my driver's license and I'm from California and it didn't work, so it's probably an older version. Um, I checked to see if it was Canada and there's only one province in Canada that uses the phrase or uses the term DMV, so I don't think that's it. Um, I think that cut off the bottom. Um, there's also high and low coercivity. It's the magnetic field strength of the card, and it's measured in Orsted. Um, your Hotel cards, uh, public transportation, that's usually low coercivity. And that's usually a brown stripe instead of a black one. So that's usually for temporary cards. The other settings I had down there, um, usually you won't need to mess with. Um, there if you have some type of custom format on your card. So this is the card reader we use, this MSR 606. Um, you pick it up on Amazon for about $80. Yeah. Uh, it comes with um, a driver for Windows and a demo program on that CD there. And you can also get the driver and demo program online at that first link. There's also a Python library and CLI utility that's cross-platform. And the programmer's manual has some useful information. That's from the uh, Python library, the GitHub, for that. All right, so using the Python library, uh, this is just a quick and dirty loop in bash to dump to a file. Um, this is just a really quick solution. It'll ignore control C, you just click it. Um, so yeah, uh, the capital R uh, option will read ISO format and that'll just keep dumping it to a file. And so there's three lines, um, one for each track and then there's a new line after that. So here's uh, the other read write options. There's a lot more options if you wanna uh, change the settings or whatnot. Um, you write um, ISO format with a capital W and 
just give three strings. If you give less than that, it'll only write uh, however many tracks you give it. Um, and same thing for just read and write, that's just in raw format. And clone, it'll just, it will uh, read and then write uh, in that order. So um, you get your card that you want to read and swipe it. This is the demo program that works in Windows. It comes with it. The Windows one is much uh, easier to use, in my opinion. No offense to Linux people out there. <coughs> but your three tracks are marked right there. So you, you swipe your demo card that you get from the restaurant. The tracks are there. You find your valid card number that you did using Burp Intruder, and you just write it into that one space. And then you can use that card when you walk into the store. This card is written with a different number, but it's got the one with money on it. And they'll swipe it, and then you'll use their balance. So uh, this is easier to use if you don't want to learn the command line options. You just uh, select read and write from the menu on the bottom right. And then you uh, swipe the card, and then you have to hit cancel. And so same thing for loading a blank card. You put the information in there. And then you uh, click right, and then swipe it. It's a lot. Cool. Um, so the first time we did this, um, I, we didn't have the writer. So we just wrote it on a, a, the valid card number on a piece of paper and took it in. And they honored it. So it. <laughs> so you know, one of the things they said, well, well, we'll just require the card. I'm like, OK, then we bought the writer. So then we just write the card number to a you know, different card, or the blank ones, take it in. So that safeguard is not really a safeguard. Um, so other things we can do, and a lot of vendors have done, is implement a CAPTCHA. So when you're going to check the gift card balance or trying to you know, find the valid cards, you'll get hit with that. It'll slow down your, your, your uh, <coughs> ability to find the valid card numbers. And a lot, what a lot of them have been doing um, because of this research is now they have that four-digit pin at the end. So if you have gift cards in your wallet, you look, most of them will have like a, uh, a four-digit pin that has like a piece of tape over it or something where you can't see it. So that's a... So that's a, a, let's say, a speed bump on the way to safeguarding, especially if you don't implement it correctly. And we'll, we'll show you some examples of how they haven't done that. So the vendor from the beginning, the one I showed you with all those cards, implemented the four-digit pin. Um, I wonder if you can tell who that is. Um, and then you can look up your gift card balance, and then they have a CAPTCHA. So you have now they have two safeguards in place. They're pretty secure. So we moved on to, you know, like they said, the lowest hanging fruit, the easier targets out there. Um, here's another example of someone, um, you know, doing it correctly. They have a four-digit pin. They're still incrementing by, you know, a single number on the 12th octet, um, but they have, you know, the CAPTCHA in place or whatnot. Uh, here's another one. These are just more examples. This one has a five-digit random number. Um, each one is incrementing by one again. So you're kind of seeing a pattern here, right? So anytime you go anywhere now in a restaurant, you're going to grab a stack of these. You're like, I see a pattern. And you can pretty much do this yourself. Um, this, these people got really paranoid, um, and they just blocked off everything. So um, you'll see some of these out there, and you'll be like thinking, what does that prevent? Well, we got so lazy that we actually just went in and took pictures of cards and put them back. Instead of like going through the process of like enumerating the valid card numbers, we just took a picture of the cards and put them back on the stack. Um, that way, you can just wait till they're sold. You already know the number, and just write it. <laughs> so. You know, so then that's why you need something over it. Yeah, so now they're, you know, they decided to cover. Well, at least this vendor did. Um, and I, I'm saying this because not all of them have, and that's why we've kind of waited two years to present this and say, okay, the hell with it. We're, gonna, we're going, going live. Um, doing it wrong. So this is a local um, coffee merchant from back in California. Uh, you can see that they have a reg code, they have multiple cards under the same octet. So it's not going to be one card per, per 10,000 tries. It's going to be multiple. You check with an invalid card. You just put a random number in. It says invalid card number. You put a valid card number in. It asks you for the reg code. Did you see a problem here? <laughs> so you can just guess those numbers. And then when they say, what's your reg code? You can say, oh, I got a card. Then you can brute force the reg code. Or you could just write the card. 
um, and go in and see if it has money on it, either or, depending on how, you know, how much time you want to spend on it. So valid cards ask for a reg code. Invalid cards just give an error. We can enumerate valid cards based upon the response. So if you're going to ask for a reg code, don't do it once the card has been told to be valid because you're kind of defeating the purpose of the reg, the reg code. I don't think we had any issues with, uh, I don't think anybody implemented uh, timeout or rate limiting or anything. Nothing. <laughs> so here's, here's the burp intruder on that. So you see there's three valid cards per, per, um, per batch. So each time you want to increment the number, you're going to find three cards that will potentially have money on them for that coffee chain. And then you can just write those out and then say, one of these might have money on it, and you see what happens. Um, that's the track using that Windows tool. You can see there's, there's three tracks on it, or actually two with data, and you just basically write the number. You rewrite the number there. It's at the beginning. So just you know, oh, you know, highlight it, put in your new number, write it to the card, walk in, see what happens. More doing it wrong. Um, this is a prominent uh, movie theater chain. Um, now you could say, okay, what's the pattern here? Um, how about I tell you that increment by one? So they just increment individually. I got these at different times in different places. There's a, there's a distinct pattern to them. Um, they're balance checking site. You can put in the number, check balance, response back with, with the gift card balance. And a little note about this. The reason it says thank you no script uh, is because I went to that site, entered the card number in, and I had no script enabled, and it just gave me that. <laughs> just return the uh, Ajax response. Yeah, and there's no CAPTCHA, no nothing to this day. So um, go to your local movie theater chain. I won't tell you which one. Um, get a couple gift cards. See if you can see a pattern. Um, and then uh, go to the movies for free with cards that you purchased. <laughs> um, Here's the post request for it. So another, like I said, using Burp uh, Intruder, you're gonna you're gonna um, grab that post request. You're gonna put your markers in the last four digits or two digits, whatever you want to. However big of a sample size you want to go at, because I said they increment by one. You can put in you know 100 card numbers, um, so it'd be like three digits, and just go through them, find out which ones have money on them, and you just you know you're gonna look for anything. It says gift card balance, whatever. And then there's your response again. So as Sam pointed out, it's just a standard you know, JSON response, and this is what Burp Intruder comes back with. So when we go through and we find the ones that say there's a gift card balance, we open it. It's like 40 bucks on it. You can then write that number to the card. And I think I just left it um, wide open and readable to you on this screenshot here. So yeah, enjoy the $40, whoever gets to it first. <laughs> All right, more doing it wrong. You see a problem? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's that's real. You yeah. Early. <laughs> yeah. So it's a, a restaurant that just incremented by a single digit. So I mean, all you have to do is know how to subtract um, and <laughs> write an eighty-four card, an eighty-three, eighty-two. Do they have an online balance checking? Tool? No. You just basically just go grab a stack of them and then just subtract from them and walk in and say, I got something on one of these cards and get some free food. And if you uh, write it to a blank card that doesn't have anything printed on the front, they're probably not going to uh, accept that, but you already have a few cards. Yeah, they'll give them to you in the restaurant. You can just take them. Like I said, there's, they're sitting out there for you to take. They're thinking you'll load them later or ask them to put money on them. So you just grab a stack or you, know, you can just take a picture, put them back, wait, whatever you want to do, and then write, write, one to a, write the value to a, a different card. Uh, this is a Players Club card. It increments by one. Um, I won't tell you what casino, but yeah. Uh, if you want someone else's Players Club points, just you know subtract. Um, it's a single track card, so you know it's just the number on it. So you can write 50, 49, 48, 47. Try a few. One of them will pop, and you'll have you know somebody's Players Club points. Sort of a lot of doing it wrong, huh? Um, <laughs> This is another movie theater. Um, this one, you have to input the card number and PIN into the request, and the response comes back with, you know, if uh, invalid gift card number. Um, so, if you if you put the application with, the, let's see, supplied PIN is invalid. The server sends an error message to the client as below, um, not the correct 
uh, account number. So you get to different errors based upon either the account number or the PIN. Um, and then if you get it correct, it gives you the uh, balance information and QR code associated with the membership uh, number. So another, another example, a little bit different than the earlier examples, but still doing it wrong. Um, <clears throat> so let's go over our safeguards again. Um, CAPTCHA, uh, very important. Um, have a hidden four digit PIN. Um, don't increment cards by a single digit. And uh, cashiers should verify the card number matches the physical card. So that's your final piece here that, you know, the physical security of it. If we're writing card numbers to cards that don't match the actual number, that could, you could shut someone down doing this. Uh, or, as this company did, they just took it offline. Like, you can't check your gift card balance anymore, call us. So um, that was their, their way of fixing it, is just to go old school telephone. Um, how are we doing on time? Let's see. Uh, 619. Oh my goodness, we went too, too fast. All right. <laughs> All right, so. A lot of time for questions. Well, yeah, a lot of Q&A if you want. Um, we have the MagStrip writer up here, so if you guys want to see how it works, we'll go through that. Um, about us, though, we, are, we um, are founders of the Norcon Hacker Convention in Chico, California. We're on our, we just had our second convention. Um, there's a website. We actually pay for speakers to come out and hotels, so if you guys have anything you want to talk about or want to attend, you know, hit us up. That's my Twitter. Um, and if you want an, uh, another walkthrough of this, if you want like more detailed slides, you can go to that link and it'll walk you through step by step how to do this. Um, and Sam? Yeah, just a quick shout out to NTT Security uh, for the help to us with this. Um, yes, mandatory yeah, sure. plug for oh, NTT sorry. Security. All right, um, any <laughs> questions? What? I had a question for you. So a lot of this was talking about how to affect the card, right? Did you Oh sorry, thank you. A lot of this was how you affect the card. Did you try anything like affecting the systems that take the cards? Um explain those? we didn't because we didn't have access to those. Uh, that would require so I mean if we you know, if I went and got a job at you know well somewhere and work there, I could probably find a way to find the valid cards, but. There seems to be a lot of systems that take cards now instead of just places. Right. And they're usually to exploit. Yeah, so like um, there's yeah, a couple of restaurant chains now that have kiosks that you can go in there and you could you know, swipe your cards. So we're trying to, we try to keep it offline to where we do all the hacking you know, there and then we take the cards in that work versus trying to exploit at the actual restaurant location. I you know, really don't want to go to jail, so it's kind of keeps it in the safe zone, I guess you could say. Question? So um, in, in your research, did you find that there was like a, a higher, uh, I guess a higher rate of uh, companies that were doing it wrong versus doing it right? Well, initially everyone was doing it wrong, um, and I'm not exaggerating. Um, we've got to the point where I'd say about half of them have remedied the, the, the problem because they use the same card manufacturer. And I think, Sam, you actually did some research on like the different companies that make the cards and Yeah, um, one of the big ones is Value Link. Uh, and you can see when you uh, swipe the card, they all have a similar format, the ones that use Value Link. And it'll usually say uh, in the middle uh, the company name that's using them and then slash Value Link or VL, something like that. And they do pretty good. Yeah, so they, they started to fix them and then there's others that just haven't or done it wrong, as we pointed out, trying to you know create a fix so it's not 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 working properly. Uh, any more questions? Yes. What was the response from manufacturers when you actually pointed this out? Was it kind of like this isn't the problem, or do they have a no shit moment? Um, the the ones I, I was working for specific companies doing a pen test, and they were there was an oh shit moment. Um, they then reported it to the card manufacturer, who then went across the board with all of their companies and tried to fix it. Um, the other ones just really didn't even respond. They didn't really care. So, you know, I'm, I mean, I could have gone in and, you know, you know used people's money, but I didn't. Um, you know, it kind of just demonstrated that it's possible, provided them the information. I mean, that's kind of standard, though, right? They ignore it until you make it public, and then, then, they, then they pay attention to you. Uh, hi. So I noticed there was some barcodes on the back of that. So you were taking pictures, uh, just of the, picking them up, take a picture, and reading the number. Did you happen to take a look at what the barcodes were, where they were like the exact same number, or were, did they include the code? Because um, I could see that happening. 
That's some of them are. Some of them are different. Some of the barcodes are just to buy the card. Okay. They're just to, um, for the register code. Yeah, I was trying to pull that up. It was a barcode. I guess it was further down. Like this one? Yeah. Yeah, so. Okay, yeah. yeah, that's the purchase. Yeah, they're all the same. Yeah, the, the card number itself is what's going to have the value. So, okay. they're, yeah, they're a little separate. Uh, questions? More? Yes. I see most of your, well, the entirety of your talk focused on store value cards like gift cards for uh, restaurants and movie theaters. Did you try things like store value cards for like cash money? Like, Vanilla Visa cards. No, I didn't go after Visa. Visa has mm -hmm. uh, you have to purchase those cards in store. Mm -hmm. So if you purchase them in store, you've kind of you know I guess you could buy a stack of them and see if you can you know find the value of the cards. This is mainly for the just what's sitting out front that you just take. And as far as I know, they're a little bit better about security. Yeah, Visa's a little better with security. You have to have the you know the three digit PIN, etc. Zip zip code. I assume with Vanilla. I don't know, but also you talked about uh, well. You mostly talked about taking the value that was on the cards. Did you try uh, changing the value that was stored on the cards? Like, I don't know if that was possible to do. These, these didn't have stored values on the cards. They just had the card number, and then it would check the server on the back end to get the value of the card. Um, there's a couple places that I didn't include in this talk that write the value to, to the card itself. You might think of places that have video games. Um, you know, <laughs> maybe some pizza there. You know, um, so those actually write values to the card. You can swipe those, change the value on the card itself on the fly. So there's that that you can uh, look into on your own. Any more questions? Who's got the mic? All right. Did you look at like rechargeable cards, the the type that like a car wash card or something like that you add, put value onto and it subtracts from? Uh, we have not. I mean, that's something we could definitely look into. Um, all these cards are rechargeable, though, in a sense that you can call in and put more money on them or steal from other people. Um, but we haven't, we haven't looked at car wash ones. Car wash and um, uh, those places that have video games uh, are what we're kind of going for next. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, this, is just something I, this is just something I've known for a while, and I haven't had any... I haven't had any way to actually use this information, but for most of the store value cards, like the vanilla Visa cards, they're typically all tied into one bank account that holds all the money. And you know, when you register one, it'll basically say, like, if you uh, register like a hundred dollar card, they'll just basically say, okay, this one card is allowed to take a hundred dollars out. And so, I don't know. Uh, this just might be an interesting idea for you to further this research, but if you could turn one of those, like even a $20 card into a $100 card or a $100 card into a $500 card, that might be an interesting vector. I think you should add me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, here. <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to look into doing something like that. That's, that sounds like something we'd like to do. For, you know, follow-up research. Any other questions? Anybody need to go over anything else that we covered or maybe you missed something? We've got plenty of time, so, yeah. It doesn't seem like there's much sophistication in the cards. I would think that there would be a fair number of people and a fair amount of losses. Is it, does, what seems to prompt the correction of these issues? Is it the amount of loss or is it? Well, there's, I mean, they're, they're mass-produced cards, so they don't want to put security into the cards. There's not going to be a chip and pin on something they're giving away at a, a store. And then loss prevention itself, you ever go shopping at Walmart or whatever, like they, they write off a lot of money a year just on theft. So someone loads a gift card, puts $100 in it, and then they go in and it's empty. Are they, was the company, are they gonna get $100 back from them saying, I'm sorry, I don't know what happened? Or are they gonna be screwed? You don't know. I mean, I haven't really looked into that. But I think they could, they could they probably have a, a ways of writing it off or at least addressing like there's gonna be a certain amount of loss uh, related to these cards per year. Or do they even know? I mean, if, if you're changing the balance on a card, how's the user going to prove that he didn't actually spend it? So they may not even know. Exactly. Unless it was, they can tie it to a certain store in a different state and he lives in a different state, you know. But that would require some back-end, you know, you know, detective work. 
and actual, you know, giving a damn that depends on the vendor, as we've, as we've talked about. Like some of them care, some of them want it fixed, some of them just like, eh, whatever. So, so, but some, some of them are getting corrected. So yeah. either they're just becoming aware of general security issues or they're aware of actual losses. Mm -hmm. hmm. May not be losses directly to them, but their customers don't want to uh, do something that's insecure. Um, a lot of these cards, it says you are responsible for this, treat this like cash. So they're saying, you know, that's your responsibility to keep this. The physical card. But, yeah. you know, if I'm stealing your physical card number and using it somewhere else, who's liable? Because, you yeah. know, you're responsible for the card. I took your card virtually. So, yes. Mm. Uh, so for the actual uh, for the actual mag card writing, like when you've gotten the uh, when you've gotten the card number, since all of the since all the different types of cards will likely have different values on the strips uh, uh, on the tracks and use a different number of tracks, will you need a card? Will you need like a blank card first in order to figure out what to write on the tracks so that when you get the new, when you get an actual value, you can write on the tracks? Can you answer that? Um, yeah. So, uh, you're talking about the formatting of uh, how each company formats the data that's on there. Right. Um, so as far as the low level stuff, uh, I think all the ones we've tried are ISO format. So that doesn't really change. Um, they do sort in different ways uh, at the high level. So some of these are just the number. Um, and they'll have a, a start character that signifies the start of it and an end character. Um, some of them, like the value link, has more information. Um, and that one and some other ones will take part of the card number and move it around to different places. Um, so. Yeah, generally, uh, you want to have one card to see how they store it. And then you can write different numbers in the same format. Yeah, so well, we actually have one here if you guys want to play with it. Um, I got some cards you can swipe. You can see how it works. If you want to go over any of the screenshots, we've still got about 15 minutes. So come on up. We could uh, demo it, show you how it works. So thank you. No more questions?